Okay, second session of this afternoon. Uh, we have a small change on the program. We have Alan Bacati instead of Peter uh, talking towards big if data analytics. Yeah, thank you. So I'm Alan Bacati from Jacobs University Bremen, and we are coordinating the Air Server project. So I'm here to talk to you about the uh, approach of this project towards big data uh, earth analytics. And what we will see in this uh, presentation is about the brief overview of the Earth Server project itself and uh, which uh, open standards we are using in the project. Um, and then something about the technical platform uh, oriented to the scalability issues of dealing with big data and some demonstration of the services that are being built upon the Earth Server infrastructure for delivering access to um, uh, data, data sets themselves. So, our servers is an uh, EU-founded project. It involves 11 partners from uh, both computer and earth sciences, putting together uh, the software developments and the technologies uh, to build an infrastructure for serving and accessing uh, efficiently the uh, science data sets, uh, providing analytics over there in a flexible way, and uh, build on top of that technology pre-operational services for that access and analysis. Uh, what's our approach? Uh, well, we use uh, distributed systems uh, for um, server-side um, processing. And um, we, we move toward the integration of data and metadata for the data sets analysis and location that we will sh I will show you later. And we visualize that on the web using 3D clients and 2D clients. Uh, all of that based on open source software and open standards. Let's talk about standards to begin with. Uh, to um, ensure interoperab interoperability of the data uh, served in, in the archives, we use an OGC standard. Uh, I'll focus uh, this presentation on the data model, uh, which is GML Cove. It's a coverage uh, model. What basically is a coverage? Well, it's a representation of a spatiotemporal varying phenomenon. And it is provided in a standardized way. Uh, well, we have ISO definition for a coverage, which provides the abstract definition. The GML definition provides a concrete implementation over which you can serve and deliver your data and read data served from other systems in an interoperable way. Uh, basic type of uh, coverage that we deal with are grids, so gridded data. Uh, Actually, not just maps, but going on on dimensionality, you have multidimensional grids, like uh, uh, data cubes in space and time, for example, if you have uh, a time series of uh, image satellite, uh, satellite image. Well, you have to locate your data in space, so uh, there is a standardized way of dealing with the coordinate reference system of your data set. And beyond grid data, which is quite uh, convenient for the technology behind, uh, the coverage model defines uh, other kind of data set, like multipoint or topologically, topologically different uh, coverage, like uh, curve, uh, surface, and solids. Let's have a look into the standard itself. Uh, this is the conceptual uh, top-level view of it. Uh, it's basically a feature from GML, so it, it is uh, compatible with GML. The coverage is defined by three main elements. Uh, well, uh, I said that it's a definition of, uh, of a data set. So the, the core element is uh, <coughs> the range set, which is the container of the actual values that you have um, to access. So if it's a, a multiband uh, spectral image, all the pixel values, let's say the um, structure, the pixel value, are contained and then delivered into, into this range set element. Well, I said it's, it can be structured data, so you have to find a way to uh, deliver information about the structure of, itself, of the data itself. We have the range type element for that. It comes from SVA common and tells you how each pixel, uh, how each value, let's say, is structured. So if it's a multispectral image, you get information about each uh, band value and semantics of the, the value itself. This is the data part. Uh, then you have to locate uh, this data in space. How do you do that? With the domain set element. The domain set is, uh, again, coming from GML, and it what is holding the coverage uh, types. 
And it, it's also what defines the type of coverage. So if it's a gridded coverage or a multi-solid coverage, it, 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 it all depends on the domain set element. So with this element, you deliver uh, the coordinates uh, of the, the data. And it can uh, take on different uh, topologies and can be compact or extended uh, depending on the layout of the data itself. So what is the, the idea behind this uh, uh, having a coverage? Well, it, it will help uh, integration of, of data because you have a unified model that takes on uh, observations from very, very, very different variety of sensors and put them uh, within a generic schema that can serve out n-dimensional uh, data in n-dimensional coordinate systems. So from uh, one side, you can uh, fill in the coverage with uh, different data sources. And on the other side, you can access and process this data with the aim of the interoperability of systems. OK, uh, there are many standards based on, based on the coverage model. Uh, there is core and extension uh, model. But uh, the key aspect of this project that I want to show you is flexibility. So which part of uh, these standards we can use for, uh, for that? Well, how do you get flexibility for analyzing and accessing a data set, standardized data set? We use a high-level query language approach. So we use a standard. Uh, that allows you to write uh, direct queries over your data model. Well, uh, having a query over a data set is a proven valid model. Uh, we do that on the coverage model. So basically, we have the Web Coverage Processing Service standard, which defines this uh, query language over the n-dimensional data set that is stored into the coverage. Uh, what can you do with this kind of language? Uh, several operations. Uh, you can do server-side computation. Well, the language is composed of uh, main elements where you define which coverage, so which data set you want to operate the query to in the four cloud. And you decide what to return out of this uh, selection. For example, here there is a band math computation defined into the query. So you're processing a coverage uh, data set, and extracting already a, a subset, set subselection of the bands stored in this value with some computation done on them. Obviously, uh, if your coverage is large, you want to subset it to a um, predefined area of interest. The query lang language allows for that, uh, so you can specify subsetting in the coordinate reference system in which the coverage is uh, stored and defined. Here, the example is latitude, longitude, and time for a three-dimensional uh, cube of data. Another interesting thing is that you can integrate different coverages together by uh, specifying them as different uh, variables in the query and provide uh, operators over these uh, different coverages uh, into the single qu query to provide an integrated result. OK, brief uh, uh, example of the um, semantics that you can get with the query. Once you, once you learn how the query language is laid out and how it works, you have the semantics of what you want to get from the processing of the data set directly encoded into the query uh, instead of having it in an extended human readable form like in WPS. So it's a compact way also of representing your function. What are we doing uh, on top of that within the frame of the project is integrate integration of uh, not only the processing part and the access part, but also of uh, accessing the metadata relative to the coverage stored into the server. What does it mean? That you don't have to know uh, all the coverages by name and know what they mean. You can do that by describing the coverages. But uh, the goal is to have uh, predefined metadata and specify the query directly on that. Uh, so for example, you can uh, tell, I want to process with the, this uh, query content all uh, coverages that deal with Barcelona as uh, the geographic extent. Or you can get metadata from the result of a processing 
like I want to uh, test some condition of the on the coverages, and I want to return the ID and the extent of these uh, coverages matching the, the processing. This is, uh, the implementation is uh, ongoing from the Jacobs University and the Athena Research Lab partners of the project. So this is for the storage and processing level. Then uh, you want to visualize some of the data after the processing, and you do that with the X3D standard that has been employed uh, in the project for <coughs> visualizing multidimensional data. So once you do your extraction and you def define how to visualize that into 3D, uh, you, you, you can visualize your data. So what we do basically is, again, leverage on the query standard to build uh, the web interfaces that builds the query for you and provides you the display of the results. An example of that is the uh, 3D visualization that we have used. And you can see uh, the result of an, uh, a query extracting uh, data from two different coverages. One if the, uh, is the um, red, green, and blue bands of the data set. And the other is the alpha channel that is built with a digital elevation model so that you can get it displayed as an image laid out on the 3D scene. And this we are doing with the Fraunhofer project partner. OK. Um, let me talk about then the platform, technical platform that we are using for storing and accessing the data. We are basing that on Raslaman, which is an array database. And it is providing the core storage of the system. Uh, core focus of the project is uh, dealing with the scalability issues of uh, accessing data. Uh, so we uh, aim at the scalability through the parallelization of the system. And uh, the approach is then to, well, we use queries to access the data, to extract the data. So we want to distribute the query based on their content and on the data location. So the uh, Resonance system offers several optimization for that. Uh, and for dealing with the data itself on a server, we have a tiling architecture. And we performed uh, uh, tile processing in a pipeline. And uh, um, well, multi-trading is employed there. Uh, but what we aim to do is the uh, parallelization at the query level so that you receive a query and you're able to split it according to the processing node that you have available and according to the content of the query. So where uh, the coverages are, loca are located, you receive a single query, you split it over different processing uh, servers, <coughs> and you then join back the results, uh, which hopefully are uh, reduced in the dimensionality because you do subsetting on the single server, and uh, you fuse back the resulting um, coverage. OK, so as I told, the um, Rasdaman system is providing the horsepower for uh, storing and accessing the data. And uh, again, it is um, an array database. So it's uh, particularly well suited for the gridded coverages. But in the project, we are extending the system for supporting the irregular grids. Uh, we have already a working example of multipoint coverage uh, uh, extraction. And uh, we are moving toward the irregular gridded coverages so that it can be used into the, the system itself. Uh, one interesting feature that we employ uh, to avoid duplication of uh, data is in situ that I will show you later. And the distributed query processing system is being implemented um, also with the integration of the metadata. OK. So brief note, uh, Rasdaman is an array database system. And it works on n-dimensional data. So you can have not only maps, not only 3D data volumes, but 4D data cubes, like in climate simulation. And uh, well, it provides not only an um, array engine, but also an implementation, the reference implementation for the standards, both the WCS and the WCPS that you can use to access your data sets. OK, one, um, sorry. one feature, one interesting feature is that it uh, partition your data archive like in um, tiling, custom tiling, 2D or 3D tiling you can do. 
and so that optimi optimize the access of the data according to the layout of the data pattern. Well, uh, the interesting feature I said was the in situ feature. Uh, what does it mean? Well, to obtain the optimization of the t of a uh, tiled storage, you have to import your data into the database and lay it out according to what you expect to be the access pattern for for your clients. Uh, one extension is to reference data files themselves or existing archives themselves, um, so you can not import but register your data. Of course, with this approach, the optimization of the data structure is, is lost, but you don't have to duplicate your, your entire archive. So you, what you can do is load, uh, link all the archive, and when you have hotspots where the data is accessed more frequently, you import directly and build the data structure for optimization. OK. Let's have a look at the services that are being built on top of this uh, technology stuff, so for the stack, sorry, for the storage and processing and visualization. We have uh, different domains uh, of um, data providing solutions for accessing and processing and analyzing data. One of them is the Creosphere data service, which provides you a web interface for accessing and analyzing uh, um, the uh, Snow Cover products. Uh, and you can do combined analysis uh, with digital elevation models and river basing district data. That can be done directly on the web interface, which builds the query for you, and you get the results displayed. Second domain is the Atmosphere data service, which is employing the same technology and providing the same interf uh, similar interfaces to uh, modis derived atmosphere products. So within, with this service, you can access, uh, for example, two-dimensional uh, extracts of the data coverage that is stored in the servers, or temporal profiles of the values of the parameters. So the service deals with the ocean data. So it provides web access to marine data sets that can be uh, analyzed uh, dynamically uh, on the web interface. And again, this is leveraging this uh, same uh, stack of standards. So what is flexible is that you can parameterize the query toward the interface uh, quite conveniently. One example of the three-dimensional visualization comes from the geology domain, uh, where you can have solid earth information, like uh, geology uh, parcels. And the access can be done by visualizing them in 3D and moving uh, them into space to see how they are located and how they relate uh, one to each other. So that's a good example of the 3D uh, visualization. Uh, to give it a little uh, fancy, not only Earth is considered, but we also have planetary science implementing this kind of services. And this uh, service is provided from Jacobs, and it's uh, uh, analyzing multispectral, hyperspectral, sorry, data sets coming from Mars. Uh, again, towered uh, with the web interface. And it provides uh, for, uh, good examples of query that compute statistics, or in this case, histogram of the data set itself. So writing a single query, you get the data for your diagramming uh, directly on the web. So for concluding, the aim of this uh, project and technology stuff is to provide what we call agile analytics over the data sets. And uh, <coughs> the concept then is to have uh, a flexible way of uh, querying your data without having to program without having to deal with the internal dynamics of the access to the data set, but just provide a high level access to a structured data set. Uh, well, uh, the integration of the data and metadata to provide search for catalogs is a good addition for that um, analytic part. And yeah, basically we have the standard based interface to the system, all implemented with the open source solutions and the visualization toolkits. So one thing I want uh, also to stress before concluding is that uh, the project is uh, building user interest groups. So whatever colleague that is working in this domain area, please 
uh, have a look at the website and at the service provider implementation and what you find useful, use their data and access to these data sets so we have uh, feedback on the solution and how the implementation is going. Good, that's all. Thank you for your attention. It's uh, provided and defined in the standard document from the OGC, so it's completely defined. Great. And you can provide different implementation, not only this one, of course. We have the reference implementation of Rasdaman, but you can build your own, obviously. Roughly, uh, well, it depends on which tiling scheme you are using for ingesting the data, on which backend engine you are uh, implementing. So, roughly, we we can get some feedback from the service provider themselves from the data ingestion part. So, I don't know exactly, like but uh, we have one service provider in the audience, so maybe he can. Depends, really, but I mean, 